Hey friends, welcome back to Intellect Medicos, where learning is made easy. First of all, I'd like to apologize for not uploading any stuff for so long. But your constant love and support in forms of likes and wonderful comments pushed me to start uploading these kind of animated videos again. I'll try to upload more videos from now onwards. Today we'll discuss about acute pancreatitis. As this name has itis in it, that means inflammation of pancreas. To start with, let's first discuss the basics of pancreas. It is located in the abdominal cavity behind the stomach. It has a head, body and a tail. It is an endocrine gland producing several important hormones including insulin, glucagon, somatostatin. And you can see a pancreatic duct running throughout the body and finally opening up into the duodenum. This pancreatic duct has pancreatic juice rich in bicarbonates which neutralize acidity of the contents moving in from the stomach as well as also has digestive enzymes that assist digestion and absorption of nutrients in the small intestine. Now we need to know the causes of acute pancreatitis. If you smash pancreas or any other organ very hard, what will happen? Obviously it will get inflamed. So remember the inflammation of pancreas by a mnemonic get smashed where G for gallstones. This is the leading cause of acute pancreatitis. This happens because any stone less than 5 mm in the gallbladder can travel down the biliary duct and can obstruct the pancreatic duct causing obstruction to pancreatic secretion which leads to inflammation of pancreas. E for ethanol that means alcohol. It is the second leading cause of acute pancreatitis. T for trauma especially blunt abdominal trauma. S in smash stands for steroids, M for mumps, A for autoimmune diseases, S for scorpion stings, H for hypercalcemia and hypertriglyceridemia. E for ERCP that means endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography. E for drugs. There are various drugs which can be responsible for acute pancreatitis. You can remember drugs by mnemonic 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 2 for didanosin. Here DI or DI stands for 2. 3 for theophylline. Remember this as theophylline. 4 for tetracycline. 5 for pentamidine. And 6 for lasix as it has 6 in it which is basically a furosemide. Coming on to symptoms. Patient of pancreatitis presents with abdominal pain. The pain which is steady and boring in character is located in epigastrium and periumbilical region and often radiates to the back as well as to chest, flanks and lower abdomen. The pain is frequently more intense when the patient is supine and patients may obtain some relief by sitting with the trunk flexed and knees drawn up. Other symptoms are nausea vomiting and abdominal distension due to gastric and intestinal hypomotility. Signs First of all, you have to see the look of the patient. Usually, they are distressed and anxious. And there can be fever, tachycardia and hypotension. There are two unique signs of pancreatitis. In the pic on the left side, you can see bluish discoloration around the umbilicus. This is called as Cullen's sign, which occurs as a result of hemoperitoneum. You can remember the shape of umbilicus with the shape of C. In the adjacent pic, you can appreciate discoloration of flanks, which is called as Gray Turner sign, which occurs due to tissue catabolism of hemoglobin. As this turner has turn in its name, so just remember that we take the turns on our sides or flanks while lying down. So discoloration occurs on flanks in grey turner sign. Next is diagnosis. Whenever you have to make a diagnosis, first see the patient clinically. That means 
the signs and symptoms the patient has presented with. Second is investigations, serum amylase and lipase levels. Values threefold or more above normal virtually clinch the diagnosis. However, there appears to be no definite correlation between the severity of pancreatitis and degree of serum lipase and amylase elevations. Out of these two, serum lipase levels are more specific for acute pancreatitis. Next is abdominal ultrasonography, which is performed bedside. You can see bulky pancreas on USG and it should be done for assessment of cholelithiasis that is gallstones or cholelithiasis that is stones and bile duct. The best modality is CECT that is contrast enhanced CT for evaluating pancreatic inflammation or necrosis or peripancreatic fluid collections. CECT done at initial presentation may underestimate disease severity as it takes up to 72 hours for necrosis to develop. Therefore, CECT should be delayed unless there is a concern for other complications or if diagnosis is in doubt. Now, prediction of severity. This is done by various gradings and scoring systems. They have been developed to risk stratify pancreatitis patients. First is by Ransom score. It is scored as on admission and within 48 hours. Just remember Ransom as Ransom call. In this pic, see the guy who is tied up. He looks anxious or terrified with an abdominal distension. Think as if he has pancreatitis. Now this ransom call which is being made is a legal issue. So remember by a mnemonic legal. Where L stands for leukocyte more than 16,000 per millimeter cube. E for enzyme which is AST more than 250 international units per liter. Remember T as 2 and S appears as 5 so 250. G for glucose more than 200 mg per deciliter. A for age more than 55 years. And L for LDH more than 350 international units per liter. Now as this was ransom call, now you have to call police or you can say George Bush within 48 hours. So remember this by a mnemonic call police or Bush. With call ca stands for calcium less than 8 milliequivalents per liter, PaO2 less than 60 millimeters of mercury, B stands for base deficit more than 4 milliequivalents per liter, U stands for BUN more than 5 milligram per deciliter, S for fluid sequestration more than 6 liters, and H for hematocrit decrease more than 10%. Now the second score to know severity is Glasgow or IMRI score. It is to be remembered by a mnemonic pancreas itself. E for PaO2 less than 8 kilopascals. A for age more than 55 years old. N for neutrophilia which is WBC more than 15,000 per millimeter cube. C for calcium less than 2 millimoles per liter. R for renal function which is by urea more than 16 millimoles per liter. E for enzymes which is LDH more than 600 international units per liter and AST more than 200 international units per liter. A for albumin less than 32 grams per liter. S for sugar that is blood glucose more than 10 millimoles per liter. In both Ranson score and Glasgow score, Values more than or equal to 3 indicates severe pancreatitis and also both these scores are to be calculated in 48 hours. Next is BISAP score which is bedside index for severity in acute pancreatitis. More recently this new prognostic scoring system is being used for early identification that is within 24 hours of patient at risk of mortality. Components of BISAP score are BUN more than 25 mg per deciliter, 
I for impaired mental status with Glasgow Coma Scale less than 15. S for SIRS. A for age more than 60 years of uh, age. P for pleural effusion. BISAP more than or equal to 3 is associated with increased risk of complications. The fourth one is Apache 2 score that is acute physiology and chronic health examination. Score more than 8 is usually associated with severe disease. The next and important most is CT severity index. It is based on unenhanced CT score plus necrosis score. Maximum is 10 and score more than equal to 6 indicates severe disease. Now coming on to management path. First and important most is IV hydration. Then second is pain control. Third, nutritional support. Now this has been changed to early enteral nutrition via nasogeginal tube. And the fourth, no role of antibiotics in infection prophylaxis. Antibiotics are recommended if there is a concern of concurrent cholangitis. Last is complication. Pseudocyst formation, second necrosis, third abscess, fourth multi-organ failure. So that was it. Thank you guys for watching this video. Do like, share and subscribe our channel to get the updates about our new videos. Thanks a lot. See you soon guys.